Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. From Mara's house, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kastuba Das. Welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday. Wednesday is Walk On Wednesday, where we take somebody that we know, that we love, that we look up to, and they're usually part of our community, and we pick their brain for 10 minutes and hear their story. And before we bring on our Walk On Wednesday guest... I'd like to introduce you to lovely Mara, who's spinning the dials today. Mara, you got any good announcements for us on Wednesday? Yes, we have back to recovery meetings today at 1 and 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And tomorrow is going to be our 1,000th show with His Holiness Ran- Maharaj Radha Swami. Unbelievable, huh? Yeah. 1,000 episodes of the Srimad Bhagavatam. I would love a show of hands on the board. If you've seen them all, I'll give you a five episode. You're missing five. Put it on the board. No, I haven't seen it, them all. Write it on the board. Write it on the board. I did. Yeah, I'd love to see that on the board. Don't raise your hand because I can't see every screen at once. Okay. Kostuba, how are you, my friend? Doing good. Looking forward to tomorrow's show. We Looking forward to today's almost, show. We got a bunch of almost coming up on the I board. I mean, I'm pretty impressed. I don't think, like, you haven't seen all of the shows. I don't think I haven't seen. There's, like, there's somewhere, like, I was just, like, it was my day day off and Kostuba had to do it or I was traveling yeah. and I. And I didn't and I didn't go back and see it. So even Vegan Trucker beat me on that. Roger Tompkins beat me. Jenna Seen them Beers. all. Jimmy James. I wow. did. Martine. All. Isabel Bilodeau. <laughs> Roger Tompkins. All of them. Pamela, who I think came all later, said most. That's pretty. Imp- it's pretty impressive when people get into it like in 2021 and have just obsessively binge listened to past episodes like five in a row. You know, I got to clean the house today. Five in a row. <laughs> it's fun when you actually travel our fo- follow our adventures too. whether whether it's an exciting adventure, like we're traveling through India or we're in Nepal or, you know, Raghunath's having a nervous breakdown. Let's follow that. <laughs> Raghunath's in the hospital <laughs> with COVID. Your life alone has been kind of like a soap opera. Raghunath. Well, none of it happened. I just manifested it all just for ratings. Actually, there was no COVID. There was no divorce. <laughs> Everything was just for ratings and today i have my uh, hand is being cut off no i'm just kidding let's bring on the time Remit- that you injured your nose remember that yeah like sliced my nose open it looked like a big number three. <laughs> oh my god that was unbelievable all right well let's bring on our special guest it's ramit pundit herself one of our favorite zoomers ramit pundit ramit. welcome to the show thank you so much Please accept my humble obeisances. Pam Ho, I'm so humble. <laughs> so happy to be here. Kastuba? Great to have you here, Ramit. Ramit, it's, you know, we know her from Brooklyn. She she runs a really beautiful, uh, sweet little yoga studio there. And what's, what do you call that neighborhood? Kensington. Kensington. Um, yeah. Kensington, which is kind of like just south of Prospect Park. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Garunga lives in that neighborhood now, right? That's right. Just a few blocks. I see him sometimes in? with a dog. Oh, he um, dog. I haven't seen him yet at the studio, but I, I see him out and about on the streets. 
Okay. Our dogs meet. Yeah, <laughs> the dogs get together. <laughs> Ramit um, and and Carla, Carla yeah. Cromag, right? Carla Cromag. Founded that's right. Guy Yoga in Brooklyn, and it is like an oasis for so many people come there. Um, and you guys are like real leaders within that uh, beautiful community. I've got the good fortune of teaching there, and we had Radha Swami there, didn't we? That's right. And That's right. Uh, Swami Sachitananda uh, right, right. was so, also so, there and, um, at the. Yeah. And that so pundit came in, there, Pundarik Goswami, that time. Oh, you're right. kidding. Oh, what? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When Radha yes. Swami and Sachitananda Swami, all three of them were there together, right? Um, a yeah, long yeah. time ago. Raman, how long have you been listening to the show? And tell us about your bhakti journey. Yeah. Uh, I think I've been listening since those Instagram uh, live feeds started. So was that it kind was of the preamble to the show, right? Super Soul Sacred Sangha. Pre That's right. Uh, those started my mornings in such a beautiful way. It was incredible. And I can't, I can't begin to explain what a, what a refuge the show has been certainly during the, you know, the COVID years, but continuing and, and throughout, I, I was reflecting when you asked me, uh, to come on, uh, Raghu, that we met. I, I met you, I think, in maybe 2010. Uh, I was a, doing a 300-hour Laughing Lotus training at 19th oh, that's Street. That's where I met the, you. Okay. Yeah. So it was that small room. And uh, I, I will say, you know, we were in there, maybe 15 students maybe you came in just a few minutes late with this harmonium and it was, you know, the energy was palpable. And, and then I think you started, we started singing, you were chanting uh, that chant. Sri Krishna um, Govinda. Yeah. Radhe, Radhe, oh, Radhe, Radhe Govinda. Govinda. Govinda Radhe. And it that's was like, bit, Arjuna, I bit... mean, the, the hair on my <laughs> arms stood up. Yeah, that song, and that that mantra has been like uh, top of the charts <laughs> in India for the last five thousand years. At Radhe Radhe Govinda, it's, uh, it's still repeatedly Billboard week after ten. week. <laughs> <laughs> and that that's and what did shortly, it. Five potent items of bhakti, like hearing kirtan. Yes, I mean, I had heard, I had, you know, I'd been to Krishna Das concerts. It wasn't my first touch in with. Uh, with Kirtan, but something about you and your energy in the room and how you came in and, and talking to us about these stories and uh, being with you in three dimensions. And then very shortly thereafter, there were two extra spaces opened up for your, I, I want to say maybe it was 2012 or 11 to the trip to India with Gopal. Nancy was there. Lori was there. Some of the beautiful Zoomers oh. here. And I was there and Carla and I just got on that. We got our visas quickly. It was a very difficult time to get a visa to right. India at that yes. moment. It was one of those strange times where you couldn't, you couldn't get in, <laughs> but right. we got in, we got into Vrindavan. <laughs> it was that, <laughs> you can't buy a ticket as, as Leela said, you know, uh, you can't, can't buy a ticket to Vrindavan. So, mm. um, that was it. And then, uh, I've been with you all to Italy. I've been, of course, the Bhakti Center, you know, it's just the association with you all and has been the great totem in my life. I mean, the best times of my life, hmm. singing with you all, being with you all, it's the best. That's so sweet. And you've been up to the farm too. And you're coming to the That's farm right. for the Wisdom of the Sage retreat. Right. That's right. Absolutely. Can't wait. Um, I think uh, Ramit, she's done. She's 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 just fully crazy. She's just pure to the core, and she's <laughs> she's just like naturally attracted to bhakti, and there's nothing. She's this there. is why Ramit, <laughs> we have to think of our Govardhan Hill Retirement Center. Wisdom 100%. of the Sages Govardhan Hill Retirement Center. I'm I'm with you. I'm all. Are with you in? I'm in. No you know golfing. Like, lots of bhajans. <laughs> You just look at someone like Ramit. She's I've never heard her criticize anyone. I've never seen her angry at anyone. I've never seen her. She just like she just naturally just, you know, when when you have that when you have that kind of like uh a certain simplicity, you know, a certain purity. And then when you hear these names, you, your hair stands on end. When you mm -hmm. go to Vrindavan, yeah. it changes your life. When you connect yeah. with you know Yeah, Kastuba, when you talk about uh you know the 
Chaitanya coming back in the mood, coming, you know, as an avatar in the mood of Radha, in the mood of Radharani, yeah. coming to experience that love. I mean, that's when I really go crazy. <laughs> you see? <laughs> That's it. It's 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 beyond. <laughs> I feel wow. I've been. I found what I'm searching for. These people talking about things that stir me so yeah. deeply, mm. and it's rare. It's rare. I, you know, I, it's so uh, simple. If our minds aren't just clouded and distracted and disturbed by so many issues that we have, issues of ego, issue, you know, resentment, and this. But if 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 we let go of that, all this stuff it clicks. You feel right. it. Absolutely. To have you all here every day at 6 a.m. I know I'm not alone when I say it's it's uh, it's such a huge service that you are doing. And I, I can't uh, words don't uh, truly words wow. don't. Uh, well, people so like you and your you. appreciation makes it more than all worthwhile. It makes it so <laughs> special for us. And that brings us to Patreon.com slash Wisdom of the Sages. <laughs> <laughs> now, Ramit, so I got a question for you. So you teach yoga. You're you're a popular yeah. and beloved yoga teacher. How do you how do you sprinkle bhakti in those classes, or do you keep the classes sort of just secular and like you know stretching? Or sometimes with people who are into bhakti like yourself, you can't help but have it bleed out of your teaching. Can you can you share how it comes out in the way you teach asanas? Yeah. You know, people come for, you know, they come for yoga push-ups. You know, it's true. Uh, yeah. Nothing nothing wrong with that. But uh, there's nothing secular about me, no, nor has there ever <laughs> been. So when, um, you know, 629 and 630, you know, Samadarsh, you know, all the things that you guys, that you all talk about on the show, they do, right. it does uh, come out in the class. I talk about... Uh, these things as much as I can. And we mm. chant, of course, at the beginning and the end of class. Um, I I listen to your words a lot in my mind, Raghunath, about, you know, give a little, to see who your audience is and give accordingly. Don't over prescribe, don't over nourish, don't try to stuff anything down somebody's throat, try to give right. a little peace and see who, uh, wants to take <clears throat> um and that's good I, because i have done my fair you can ask bakta glenn who's live on the show right now how much because there was a time where i held people in headlocks and shoved it down their throat <laughs> <laughs> but that's yeah you're delicate you're a delicate speaker of the philosophy and i think it's true it, it, with a person like yourself you can't help but it, it it just comes out of you have you ever had this effect where you're just chanting in class and people are unfamiliar with it and it just like cracks them open. Yes. Yes. And it's never the people that you think, you know, and sometimes people are filled. Sometimes I am too, you know, and that filled with tears and you never know who's going to be touched and what, on what day and what mm. way, but, um, right. you know, right. Well, thank you. Yeah. You thank sweet you. lady. Thank you. Thank and, you all so much. And uh, looking forward to seeing you at the farm. And if you're in the Brooklyn area and you want some of that good stuff, uh, what's your website for your uh, yoga studio? Yeah, jayayogacenter.com. J-A-Y-A. J-A-Y-A, yoga center. Do you still have two places? Is it? You have yeah, two... we have two. We had three, but during the pandemic, one closed. The one where oh, Radha wow. Swami came the original flagship that had opened that one in closed. 2000 yeah but we, we still have two small humble spaces okay. nice. i'm gonna come back i'm gonna come back yes anytime <laughs> <laughs> all right ramit pundit thank you thanks for joining us give our love to thank carla you. cromag and uh onward with the show today <laughs> Kasiva Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chayeva Narotamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tatuja Yamadi Rayat. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. Unto Nara Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and to Srila Vyasadev, the author. Nasta Prayesha Badrishu Nicham Bhagavat Sevaya. 
Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki. By regular attendance and classes in the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotees. All that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated in loving service to the Supreme Lord, who is praised with transcendental songs will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Jnana Tamarandasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Medatam Yena Tazmaya Shri Gurave Maha. I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My teachers are opening my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. Okay. Do, 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 do. Reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 5, Chapter 9, Text text 12, Miss Mara. <laughs> I think you're just, <laughs> just checking in with her, making sure it's right. Right. Yeah. You know, uh, th this is some pretty wild stuff we're going to read today. It's right getting now. crazy. <laughs> it's getting really crazy for getting 999 crazy. things are getting crazy over here maybe we should do nine. uh live on instagram again like how ramit got into it you know but i think um a lot of people got into it arumar got into it like that uh vegan cannoli nancy rothman nancy rothman you Bacta got into Louis. it like that too Bacta 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 Louis did because there's um, people who follow you on instagram but they don't even know it's you know what i mean i like, think they're every now and then i'm well <laughs> I think, I'm what? just saying, slow down. I think there are ways to, I think the technology has changed from three years ago. And now, uh, just like we do it live on Facebook, I think we could do it live on Instagram now, too. Is that right, Mara? Do you know? I think we should look into that. I'll look into it. I'll check it yeah. out. Check that out, Mara. But uh, things are going to get wild today, Roganath, because uh, we were mentioning yesterday that uh, w w we're talking about Judd Bart, right? Yeah. The king. He was this he was a great yogi and he wandered off after he what did his kingly duties so well he he went off into the forest to be a yogi he was doing great i mean he was doing really good doing really really good i was really proud got, of him. it was like part of that uh, video series devotees gone wild <laughs> yes um, um and and then he well he went wild the way that he went wild was he got attached to this repeatedly. beautiful little sweet little cuddly furry soft adorable deer yeah and um it just adorable. totally distracted him he lost it he you know and um he took birth as a deer and he but in that birth as a deer he knew he could he remembered oh this is i got hooves i know why it was because i was just meditating on the deer constantly i'm not gonna make this mistake again then he as a deer he went off to the to the ashrams and up in the mountains and he just lived there just getting ready for the next birth took birth as a human being in a family of brahmanas in a family of uh you know real religious people you know um his father was very affectionate to him but he said i'm not gonna i'm not gonna get caught up in in these external worlds e even even the very religious world i'm not going to get caught up because it can be a distraction too with that the know? religious world can be a distraction from spirituality yeah, yeah. strangely <laughs> enough yep exactly and and so um it, i gotta remember that you know I what i mean because sometimes that. i'll i'm i'm pretty out of the religious world i think except for my own private religion that's going on between me and my altar you know what i mean but but it's easy to get sucked up into religious dogmatic politics and stuff like that um, you have to like really step back, zoom out and see what is actually going on. Where, what is the goal here? It's, yeah. I have to connect with God on a regular basis. I have to feel that connection. The rituals don't work unless there's that connection. The, the rituals are meant to serve the connection. Yeah. You, you know, um, I, I think maybe, you know, it, it's an interesting topic to um, explore. Um, I think that you know now you know they do polls and like particularly in the united states um year by year the amount of people that disassociate themselves from quote unquote religion and associate themselves with quote unquote spirituality you know like it's just spirituality is just going higher and religion is going down you know and it's sure. like, but but um but exactly what that means people are unclear of exactly what that means is not necessarily always that well articulated. Um, so I think that's an interesting topic to explore and, and, but perhaps one way of one way that where you get to the heart of this 
is the idea that yes, religion involves um, structures, you know, not only structures like buildings, like places of worship and institutional structures, like, you know, hierarchies and, and, and so on, but also structures just like the rituals themselves, you know, the practices themselves are structures um, that are meant to, uh, they have a purpose and they're meant to bring you somewhere. And, and, and I think, as you're saying, sometimes we get too caught up in the structures. Sometimes we begin to identify with the structures. Sometimes we, we, we practice these structures or these, we, we involve ourselves with these constructs in order to appear to the world in a particular way. And we can isolate people who are not part of that structure, but very, very the, spiritual the, too. The, the structures can lead to conflict where there's a difference in structures, even though ideally they're meant to be leading to the same. And what, is, what are they meant to be leading to? Like, wh when does it become spirituality? When we see, when we begin to see the world in a different way and respond yeah. to the world in a different way, then it's working, you know? Yeah. If it's just that we're following the rules, that, that's, it's, it's not necessarily working at all. But when I begin to see, oh, I get it. You know, I see God behind everything. I see, I see spirit within every living being. And I, and, and because I see it for real and not just theoretically, I respond with um, affection, with uh, respect, with compassion naturally. Mm. Then we're getting to that spiritual level, you know? And, and there's so a very, very wide rim of this funnel rim, um, yeah. that we have to be careful not to exclude people from. Um, I look at it like in the widest thing. I think everybody, I think a lot of people can really see themselves. I'm a spiritual being. A lot of people can fall into that category or easily be convinced into it with through conversation. And that's why I sort of like at the farm, you know, I think like even getting into permaculture or gardening or stuff like that, it's a very, very wide rim of what we do of Krishna Bhakti, but like to, to watch a plant grow, it's a spiritual activity to you start to recognize spirit in what we would previously called a thing it's just a it's just Objection. a cactus it's well we're not growing cactus <laughs> but <laughs> it, 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 it's it's just you know it's rhubarb it's it, no it's actually a being there are there are beings growing and they're giving fruit and flower and um it's it sort of like can bring you in a whole new state of consciousness of yeah. of this uh even uh, seeing evenly through all the living entities and a respect okay. for the land. Yeah. And I mean, you know, Prabhupada would th say things like, you know, Christians, he would say very broad minded things about, you know, Christians are devotees of God. And then what we, we, we ended up creating where even different Vaishnav lineages are arguing with each other. It's so silly how there is one God and we're all lost in the material world. That's our bio. There's one God and we're, we're, and we're connected to him, but we forgot and we're lost and we're trying to get the hell out. Please help us. That's our sort of buy. That's Please our story. Us. Yeah. Please if help a ritual us. help, I'll take it. If it's we're bumping gonna... into walls, tripping over things, <laughs> yeah. stepping on glass. Okay. So, so knowing this, understanding this deeply and, and coming from his dear birth into a human birth again, mm -hmm. the, the King Bart says, I'm, I'm going to, I got my realization. It's deep. I'm detached. I'm not looking for prestige. I'm not looking for honor. I'm not, I'm not at, I don't even care how people look at me. I'm feeling that spiritual connection so deep. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to make sure I don't trip up again. And in, in, in order to do that, and we were mentioning yesterday, this isn't something that we necessarily imitate, but it's something that we can draw principles from. We can, we can learn lessons from. He said, I'm just going to live like I'm practically like deaf, dumb, blind, ignorant, retarded, you know, like just completely dull. Well, he's called Jada Barta now, which means like dull Barta. A little dull, a little dull. Like a dullard. He wasn't and, um, dull. He was pretending. So he, had he, was to, pretending. he didn't have to deal. Yeah, I'm not going to get caught up. Even I'm born in this family that's very religious. I'm not going to I'm not going to enter into that and have adopt the the prestigious position or you know whatever. So he's pretending he's like really out of it. Now his father was very kind to him even though he had it obviously revived, it required a lot of patience and you know sure. to try to train him. Uh then his father dies, his mother dies, his brothers now are kind of his family they they're 
they're like those religious people that don't have any spiritual insight. They're not compassionate towards him even. Sure. So he's being he's going to be mistreated or he they learn the shlokas. They learn the rituals. They learn they have a vision. Offer the incense and the flowers and, you know, say the mantras. Yeah, the mantras clean, their, yeah. clean their hands, but they're cruel. Yeah. You, you know, they're short sighted. So now more people, even crueler people are going to enter his realm. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to happen today. Um, and, and as I mentioned yesterday, this chapter is just framing who he is. Because the next three or four chapters, maybe five chapters, are going to be all his teachings, right? Mm -hmm. he, he's going to be walking around like he's a dullard, and, and another king is going to start to criticize him, get on his case, and then he's going to speak. Mm -hmm. Here's the person that never speaks. Never speaks, and now he's going to speak. The, and then he yeah. speaks, and what comes out is like, whoa, his understanding, his knowledge is so clear and so deep, and the king is like, oh, my God, what have I done? I've, I, what an idiot I am. I was criticized. You are a very well, special person. Judd Bart came to this state of being where he, it's just like, I'm not playing this game. I'm not going to play this game. For, at a young age, he got that. And mm -hmm. I think some of us go through different seasons of life where we're like, I'm not doing this anymore. It's <laughs> over. I'm not. It's that part of my life is dead. It's over. It's done. I'm burying it onward. And it just, people just like walk away from sometimes it's a relationship. Sometimes it's a a place they've been living in or an apartment or a house or a family or something. But some like sort of like, no more. I'm not playing this game. Uh, quit the job, you know, flip their desk over, or just walk out of the <laughs> walk out of the yeah. office. Well, you know, like he's doing. And again, we say you don't we don't necessarily imitate. If we tried to live like he was living. Yeah. Our mind would be constantly disturbed. He was eating just any kind of like crumbs that people were giving him he was sleeping on the ground he was yeah. hardly bathing he was like our minds would be freaking out his, his mind was peaceful because he was so detached we don't have to, even our detachment doesn't have to manifest in that way um and bhakti is so special because it gives us that opportunity that through developing like just like ramit was saying like she she hears the kirtan her hair standing on end is that kind of attraction to the spiritual that kind of attraction mm. to to krishna that we lose interest, but we don't ha in in the material life. But we don't have to be like living this extreme de external detachment. But I, um, I, he I, yeah. Um, are you finishing that thought? Are you going? Well, to I was leading thought? into another thought, but if, okay. I want to hold that thought. Pause okay. that thought. We're going to come back to it. Remember what it is, because we're going to come back. I, but I wanted to bring already. up something <laughs> something that you said, which was glorifying remit, but actually can sound like a put down, which is you called her simple. Now in our culture, that's a very beautiful compliment mm -hmm. because simple means a non, you know, if, if you say, Hey, Mary, you're so simple. That sounds like a put down. Well, the way I said it, it was but you're not simple. <laughs> nice and wonderful, but um, it sounds like they're like, that sounds like they're dull or they're not uh, thoughtful or they're a little slow, but simple means not complicated in the mind. Yeah. What, what are you thinking about me? What are they thinking about me? Oh, why did she do this? Or, I need this. I'm, I need that. I'm angry at them. Why would they do that to me? How this is so unfair. This is happening to me. Do they all hate me? Does everybody hate me? You know, stuff like this. <laughs> this is like a complicated mind. And when I bring this complicated mind into relationships, what to speak of bringing it into sacred circles? There's a lot of room for making offenses and things like that. Ramit has a simplicity about her. That's a very beautiful thing. It's not like she's uh, has a low uh, IQ. It's just like her mind is not complicated. So when she can hear Kirtan, it goes yeah. right to the heart. And okay, uh, that's what's lo quite lovely about her. So that was a put up. It was a glorification. It, was a it wasn't a pejorative. Up shut up. Hey, that's a put up or shut up. Like Put, put up or shut up, Ramiz. <laughs> Say good things about people or shut up. Okay. Um. So I don't quite, I'm not sure if I remember, but in any case, now we have Barta. He's got this whole external thing going on. He's got his deep internal thing going on. Uh, he's being mistreated by his by his brothers. But now even crueler people are going to come in. And this can be a little confusing because they're worshipers of the goddess Kali. Mm -hmm. okay? Which is like um, a very fearsome manifestation of divine energy. 
Mm. Right. And we could talk a little bit about Kali worship and so on. And and within their worship, their their worship is a concocted idea. Now, th- th- it's it's something that's um if someone like say from a Judeo Christian background is exposed to things like Kali worship. They'll look at it as like devil worship. Practically. Yeah, this is really some dark stuff. And and quite frankly, people <laughs> from within, <laughs> people it's from get good, ready. Well, pe- people from within, <laughs> like for instance, th- this is what we have to understand when when if we're coming from a Judeo Christian background, say, yeah, and we're exposed to this, you you could call it Hindu thought, but really, it's a big um, cluster. When, when, what, what people call Hinduism, which is a relatively modern term for a very ancient cluster of different beliefs and ideas that are stemming from a similar source but have, are manifesting in all different ways. Sure. Right? I mean, there's people that are Hindus that are um, the- theistic and then ones who are practically devil worshippers. We would call it <laughs> black <laughs> magic. Yeah. Tantrics, right? Left-handed yeah. tantrics, and, and and a lot of it is concocted, like you know, and and these Kali worshippers that we're going to read about, they had a concocted idea. Now, if we go to the, in, within the Vedic ancient, like we're Krishna bhaktas, we're bhakti yogis, we don't really have much interest in the four Vedas. Certain mantras, of certain um, hymns from them, we will chant at certain times, but for the most part, we don't even pick them up. Krishna basically denounce them in the Bhagavad Gita as, you know what? This is still within the material realm, people. Yeah. That's what he was saying. It's knowledge. Yes. It's like metaphysical knowledge, but it's still the highest thing it gets you is higher higher material planets. Exactly. And even within that, within people that want things of this world, you're going to get different grades of people, mm. certain people that we would call sattvic, who who are who want peace and and simplicity and happiness and 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 and, and then there are people that like say that are more demonic. They want your soul. <laughs> not really want Serious. Your soul. Not today, Satan. Make people uh, not today, Satan. <laughs> but there's people like these. There 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 are these uh, mystics. It's in Radha Swami's book. The guy tries to capture the guy's. Oh, the guy yeah, gets his soul dark. captured. That was the scariest. Well, I think he wanted to get. I think he wanted the person's body. He wanted to get into that person's body. Yeah, right? I mean, so I mean, I want to kick your is, soul out of this body, and I want to take That stuff is real. Possession, <laughs> okay, ghosts, right, right, soul capturing. Hold. That's all real. We I'm just don't not, go there. We don't go there. It's okay. there. We're not interested in that. We're not interested. You want to learn it? You, it's not here on Wisdom of the Sages. We're not going to teach. Not, you. Not, okay. I know it, well, but I won't do it. Well, no. So, so generally, people worship that. You see. Who is Kali? She is a, a Shakti of the Supreme Lord. She is an energy of Krishna, but she's an energy like down, like first there's Radha. Now Radha is beautiful, kind, soft, compassionate, just glorious like that. The origin of goddesses. Yeah, and from her come all the different goddesses, including Kali. You know, Durga and, and ultimately Kali, like this very fierce form of Durga. The, Kali doesn't exist in the spiritual realm. Kali exists in this material realm. That's right? why it's, they say Dave, this this world's also called Devi Dom. Devi Dom. It's the right. it's the it's the realm of the Devi. In, in other words, she's responsible. It, it means that it's almost like a prison guard, you know? Like even Durga means like fort or like prison, right? Like that. Mm. And, and um and in Kali in particular is worshipped by people. They want the things of this world. This is most commonly, this is the way that people worship in Durga. I want wealth. I want power. I want sex. I want these, th- and they're worshiping Kali. I'm generalizing, but this is the general idea. And even within the, and Kali is also worshipped by the meat eaters. Cause like within the Vedic text, it says that if you want to eat meat, and this is the point that I want to make right now, that if, if you're coming from, let's say, Judeo-Christian background and you're looking at at this broad thing of Hinduism, it's like, there's all the crazy stuff going on. That's what you're into, like sacrificing an animal. Right. This is weird. Um, the Vedic text will say, um, well, here's the point. <laughs> the, 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 this, is the, this is the broad point that I'm trying to make, and then I'll illustrate it. I'm going to illustrate it too. My first time in Mayapur. 
during oh, Kali Puja. Yeah. So, 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 so these texts, they're going to, it's not like it's going to say this is right and everything else is wrong. What it's going to do is it's going to appeal to people on all different levels and give them a step forward. Like there's a, there's a great example of this, a clear example of this. When Narda meets the hunter, Mragari. Mragari the hunter. Yeah. yeah that, that, that Narda, who is this, he's a bhakti yogi. He's pure in every way, you know. And he meets this, he, he's seen these half-killed animals, like just. They weren't lying. killed. The hunter just would torture them, kill them, not Half kill them. kill them. He was getting them. off on that, right? Yeah. And so Mergari, so Narda finds this hunter, and I think even for the hunter, when he sees the form of Narda, it's like glorious. You know, he's beautiful and divine, and even he's a little. You know, even though he's living in such a dark world, when he sees Narda, he's like impressed. You know, and Narda gives him an instruction. Now Narda didn't even tell him stop killing animals. Now he would want him to stop killing animals, but what he said is, if you must do this, right? If you must then please at least kill them all the way. Don't half kill them and make them suffer like this. Yeah, it's called a, um, what's the word? Con, con, con. Not consideration. Not a... Consolation? Cons, not a consolation. A what's con the word? <laughs> I don't know. God. I'll think about it in a second. Keep going, keep going. Okay, so, so, so he gave him a step, one step forward because he recognized, he recognized this is where you're at concession it's a concession, a concession. A he concession. gave a concession a concession yeah it wasn't he wasn't giving him the full instruction but if you're if you are so caught up in this killing of it then at least take a step forward he was trying to and so when we look at these the, the broad vedic literatures if you look at like if you go all the way to the to one end of the spectrum it's like saying okay if you have to eat meat don't buy it from a factory right. farm. Right. It's a concession. It's Slaughter that animal yourself, you know, you, and, 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 and chant a mantra into its ears that's going to help you understand the darkness of what you're doing and how you're going to have to pay a karmic price for this. Now, Prabhu, now, I didn't get this when I went to India. I just thought Hindus, vegetarians, all good, namaste. Then I went to, and then I went to Mayapur, and that was yeah. 1988. Across the river, I was exploring yeah. on my own, just Nobody exploring, tell. wandering around a guy who could barely tie his dhoti. And I was like, oh, my God, a petting zoo. No, this isn't a petting zoo. Everybody's just it must be walk your goat day today. OK, cool. Everybody's walking a goat. Yeah. Oh, my God, they're having a parade. Look at that giant float of that deity. Oh, it's a lady deity. Oh, the lady deity is wearing a garland of heads of skulls oh. of oh look she's a ferocious deity oh she must be mother nature mother nature is so ferocious at times mm -hmm. oh wait a oh wait a second they're killing all these goats mm -hmm. they're slaughtering My, the petting zoo thing went away quick this is part of that practice is the offering of the goats to kali and yeah. it was super it completely creeped me out i was like what am i getting into here yeah so so like the Vaishnavas, the Bhakti Yogis, we respect Kali because she is a, a manifestation of divine energy. But we respect her, like, but we, but we don't, but we worship Radha, right? That's the face. It's it's almost like um, let's say like you have like a a, a loving father, you know. But like in one moment, he manifests a different mood. Like been, Kali is manifesting this mood. Like she's like, like for instance, if your father works in the prison, right? And Good analogy, and, I like where you're going. Okay. <laughs> I'm just coming up with it on the spot. But Good. if your father works in the prison and sometimes in that prison, you know, he gets, you know, like he's the prison guard and sometimes he has to get violent and, you know, yeah. but when you think of your father, that's not who you're thinking of. You know, you're thinking of the, the, the person that loves you and is kind to you. And, and, and that's the father that you want. You don't put a picture of him like, beating down like a you know holding down like a you know beating down a prisoner or something like on your you know yeah on his on his grave on your wall or his great yeah your you, dad at work yeah you, you know you think of him as, as that, that loving side you know of him and, and so, so so what's going to happen is these kali worshipers they're 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 not only not sacrificing an animal to kali 
they've concocted it and they're they want to sacrifice a human being right and who, here he is this guy is like you know we can we can take this guy let's put a rope around his neck and they're going to take him to be killed by kali and then things get crazy raganath yeah jed okay. bar didn't want to play the game and now look what's about to happen to him not okay. just mean kids from high school this is gonna this story is gonna get real dark Real, real quick. fast. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if those it's like if those guys from junior high school had a little devil satanic cult. That's what it would be like. So these guys there, are there must be a movie about that. High school they're, kids, they're, satanic cult. Yeah, I'm sure bad, there are. Bad girls. What are those, those girls that yeah, they know these these girls that they learn these mantras and they're doing what is that what was that movie? Ouija boards. No, there's like four girls and they know mantras and they're doing dark stuff. Wasn't there a movie like that? The Craft. The Craft. The craft. Oh. Okay. okay. Um, let's hear. Let's hear. Let's text 12. Virgos. Text 12. At this time, being desirous of obtaining a son, the leader of Dakoits. A Dakoits like a criminal. A robber. Yeah, like a band of robbers. Like the, yeah, the, the, Dakoits. The, yeah, there was like these band of, of criminals. Yeah, in the 80s, there was Dakoids all over India. Who's going to watch out? <laughs> that was like a Remember common that, like, um, phrase we'd say, hey, are any Dakoids there? Who was who that woman that was like kind of like a Dakoid, but she was doing it for, for good? You know, like uh, something Davy. She'd come to Vrindavan. A Dakoid woman? I don't know. She, yeah, she was like kind, the Robin like she, Hood of Dakoids. She kind of, yeah, she was kind of like a Robin. She was kind of a good figure, but uh, oh, what, someone's putting it up there. What is it? Pulan Davy. Yeah, that's right. What was Pulan her name? Davy. Yeah, she's kind of fought for good, but in any case, um, yeah, yeah, these, this, so you could see that what they're, he, they were interested in the birth. Uh, he was interested in having a son, so he said, "I want a son. Let me do a sacrifice to Kali so that I can receive a son." Okay, well, here you go. The leader of the Dakoids, who came from a Sudra family, wanted to worship the goddess Budra Kali. So that's even Budra a Kali. very ferocious form of Kali mm -hmm. by offering her in sacrifice. A dull man. Where are we going to get a dull man around here? Hey, there's one. Oh, there's one. Judd Bart, <laughs> the guy who's Perfect. the chapter's named after, who's considered no better than an animal himself. Okay. I mean, I don't know if this is, I guess this is all concocted, but. Yes. The, 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 Pro Prabhupada's going to say this in his commentary. Okay. They, they just. You I think even in the verse, it might say this. Well, let's, let's continue. Okay. Text 13. The leader of the Dakwitz captured a man animal for sacrifice. But he escaped. I wonder what that is. Like a, like one of those like uh, people raised by wolves, like a feral I think it, human. <laughs> I think it means another like a person that seemed like a dullard or something. Like that. They didn't okay. have the functioning intelligence apparently of a okay. Human being. All right. And the leader, not very politically correct, to call them a man animal. But he escaped, and the animal. leader ordered his followers to find him. They ran in different directions, but could not find him. Wandering here and there in the middle of the night, covered by dense darkness, they came to a paddy field where they saw the exalted son of the Angira family, Judd Bart, who was sitting in an elevated place, guarding the field against attacks of deer and wild pigs. So like the brothers are saying, like, uh, you sit up all night and uh, make sure no, no animals can. Okay. <laughs> His brothers were so cruel. <laughs> yeah. You never had mean older brothers, did you? I didn't have an older brother. Man. The followers and servants of the Dakwaite chief considered Judd Bart to possess the qualities quite suitable for a man animal. And they decided that he was a perfect choice for sacrifice. Their faces bright with happiness. They bound him with ropes and brought him to the temple of the goddess Kali. Oh. After this, all the thieves, according to their imaginative ritual, right? They're just making See? stuff up. There you go. Yeah. For killing animalistic men, bathed Judd Bart, dressed him in new clothes. He, he must have been thinking, oh, what's going on here? Thank you. <laughs> you know, like a suit on. <laughs> Decorated him with ornaments befitting an animal. What does that mean? I don't know. Smeared his body with scented oils. Decorated with him with tilak, sandalwood pulp, and garlands. I'm getting flashbacks to Bugs Bunny where they say, yeah, you want to come over for lunch? What are we having? And he's sitting in the pot. Oh, a hot bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> We're having you. <laughs> Rabbit stew. They fed him awesome sumptuously. <laughs> they fed him sumptuously and then brought him before the goddess Kali, offering her incense, lamps, garlands, 
parched grains, newly grown twigs, sprouts, fruits and flowers. In this way, they worship the deity before killing the man animal. And they vibrated songs and prayers and played drums and bugles. Judd Bart was then made to sit down before the deity. At this time, one of the he's not even resisting. He's not resisting. Yeah. Okay. He's like, all right, what's going on here? At this time, one of the thieves acting as the chief priest was ready to offer the blood of Judd Bart, whom they imagined to be an animal man, to the goddess Kali to drink as a liquor. Good morning, everybody. (laughs) It's it's our morning show. You know, I think the worship of Kali um, has become a little bit like popularized just because it's like... um, I think it's almost seen as like a response, like almost like a feminist response. Like, okay, a woman kicking yeah. ass out there. Yeah, why does, I I exactly. <laughs> why does, you know, why, well, who says God is a he? God's a she. And then yeah. so they hear about Kali. They're like, yeah, we worship Kali. Uh, and, 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 and they don't even quite understand what they're saying. Yeah. If they understood what they're saying, they may think twice about we worship Kali. But anyway. Okay, continue. Anyway. He took up a fearsome sword, Roman. Took up a fearsome. He he therefore took up a very fearsome sword, which was very sharp, and consecrating it by mantra of Bajrakali, raised it to kill Judd Bart. Yikes! All the rogues and the thieves who made arrangements for the worship of Goddess Kali were low mind, low minded, and bound to the modes of passion and ignorance. I know what that's like. They were overpowered by the desire to become very rich. Therefore, they had the audacity to disobey the injunctions of the Vedas so much that they were prepared to kill Judd Bart, a self-realized soul born in a Brahmin family. Due to their envy, these Dakhoites brought him. It's it's amazing that I guess this has happened. I was just saying it's amazing that these like real murderers are religious. But I guess when you think about like the Godfather, they were all sort of Catholic, you know. Well, again, that's what we're we're saying that the 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 Vedas isn't aren't just going to say either you get all the way over here or forget it. They're going to say if this is where you're at, then okay, if you sacrifice an animal, chant these mantras, understand that you're going to have to pay karmically for this, and and hopefully through that you you begin to think why am I doing this? You know? mm-hmm. okay. Judd Bart was the best friend of all living entities. Oh, he was no one's enemy. And he was always absorbed in meditation on the personality of Godhead. He was born of a good Brahmin father and killing him was forbidden, even though he might have been an enemy or an aggressive person. Can't just do it. He's not those things, but he can't do it. In any case, there was no reason to kill Judd Bart and the goddess Kali could not bear this. So the goddess is real. Goddess isn't just a statue. The goddess Kali is. And what is she? What is her? What is her actual position? Her actual position, just like I'm a father. But what's my actual position? I'm a servant of God. What is goddess Kali? She is the governing uh, goddess of the material realm who rewards different shaktis and mystical powers uh, to, to all living entities. But who is she ultimately? She's a servant of Lord Vishnu. There you go. So she cannot tolerate this. Here's a saintly devotee who's about to be killed by a bunch of low, low, uh, low born people. Not low born, but. I mean, it's not their birth that she was low born, but <laughs> yeah. no, low class. I'm low to class. Say. Low yeah, class. Low we don't class. care if someone's low born. I'm low born. OK, get off my back. If you're on my back, for that. <laughs> I'm low born. I can say that low born means we're all low born. It's Kali Yuga. My father was cutting up meat at the dinner table and I was go- I was licking my lips. That means low born. OK, OK. Yes. He's a nice guy, by the way. <laughs> but he was still doing that with an electric knife. Okay, and the goddess Kali is personally okay. Check this out. Very interesting here. What's about to happen? She, the goddess, could immediately. The, little, what's that? She could not bear this. Suddenly, she, oh, where, where are you at? She could immediately understand, understand. that these sinful dacoits were about to kill a great devotee of the Lord. Problem. Suddenly, the deity's body burst asunder. Solution. What does asunder mean? Burst asunder? Burst open. Yeah, burst open. And the goddess Kali personally emerged from it 
in a bur- in a body burn in a body burning with an intense and intolerable effulgence. You want it, Kali? You got her. This is a Krishna Kali miracle, isn't it? <laughs> They're about to kill him and the body, and she bursts out of the deity. Well, it gets it, she gets heavy with him, Rogan. All right, here's what Kali's action. Here's some Kali Leela for you guys. Intolerant of the offenses committed, the infuriated goddess Kali flashed her eyes and displayed her fierce, curved teeth. Her reddish eyes glowed and she displayed her fearsome features. She assumed a frightening body as if she was prepared to destroy the entire creation. Leaping violently from the altar, she immediately decapitated all the rogues and thieves with the very sword with which they had intended to kill Judd Bart. Whoa. It's a Krishna miracle. Oh, it gets worse, Mara says. Okay. Yeah, it gets, it gets wilder. <laughs> this is this is a, a movie. She then began to uh-oh. she then began to drink the hot blood that flowed from the necks of the beheaded rogues and thieves as if this blood were liquor. Indeed, she drank the intox- this intoxicant with her associates who were witches and female demons. I guess that would be a demoness. So there's more of them around there. They're just yeah, having so, a party. So it's, just, it's like basically she burst out. A bunch of other little demon ladies came out. Uh, not also. demons. They're not demons. Yeah, they are. Witches and female demons. Oh, okay. You're right. I'm sorry. They were, they're demons. <laughs> they're followers. Yeah, Judd Barge just sitting there. Hey, hey, guys. Everything's cool. (laughs) Becoming intoxicated with this blood, they all began to sing very loudly and dance as though prepared to annihilate the entire universe. Can you imagine the dance of the demonesses? Whoa. I guess I could understand if you're like a British imperialistic British guy trying to teach Catholicism, right? Or or Protestant. I don't know what they were trying to teach back then. Maybe Protestant. Um, Like when you hear about these books and the worship of Kali and the offering of... You must have been like, yeah, this stuff is crazy. People are crazy. <laughs> Some dark Let's give stuff. them Jesus right now. <laughs> they need Jesus. Their souls. <laughs> um, a couple more verses, and then maybe when we come back on after tomorrow's show, we'll talk a little oh bit more. Oh man, about it's Kali. seven o'clock. Let me finish this. It's seven o'clock. Becoming intoxicated with blood, they all began to sing very loudly and dance. Okay, I read that. At that, at the same time, they began to play with the heads of the rogues and thieves tossing them about as if they were balls. Should we, let's, maybe we should stop there. No, there's two more verses and then... Okay. All right. Go stupid says, keep going. Now we're lost. Okay. When an envious person commits an offense before a great personality, he is always punished in the way mentioned above. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Your head's going to be a <laughs> tennis ball. Okay. Sukadev so Goswami then just said to Maharaj Prakshit, so now we're back to the narrator, O Vishnu Datta, that was the name for uh, Sukadev Goswami. Or Maharaj no, Prakshit, right? Maharaj Prakshit. O Vishnu Datta. Those who already know that the soul is separate from the body, who are liberated from the invincible knot in the heart, who are always engaged in the welfare activities for all living entities and who never contemplate harming anyone, are always protected by the Supreme Personality of Godhead who carries his disc, the Sudarshan, and acts as a supreme and acts as supreme time to kill the demons and protect his devotees. The devotees always take shelter at the lotus feet of the Lord. Therefore, at all times, even if threatened by decapitation, they remain unagitated. For them, this is not at all so wonderful. We got to okay. read this tomorrow because I think. Yeah, I, not tomorrow because we, tomorrow's episode 1000 with Radha Swami. You see, whenever you go to the high pitch, it, it like the mic doesn't pick it up. Like, episode 1000. Dog whistle. <laughs> but um, just but but before we call, just think about this. Kali came. The, the, Kali had these devote. They were devotees of Kali. Mm-hmm. She came out. She protected Krishna's devotee. She killed her own devotee. Interesting point. Interesting point. But let's cut. Yeah, I think you're right. Let's we'll we'll interview Radha Swami tomorrow for episode one thousand. Right. Then we come back on Friday. Let's revisit this verse. Yeah, and uh, we'll return and back to uh, drinking blood and da- yeah. drinking blood and dancing. <laughs> what like did it. you hear in your podcast this morning, Roger Tompkins? Well.
Okay. Okay, Mara. Here's some takeaways, Mara. Got any good takeaways today? I do. All right. Drink the blood. <laughs> Rain of blood. It all clicks when we keep our minds simple, like Remit. Don't lose your head. <laughs> the religious world can be a distraction from our spirituality. Want to play ball? It seems like that was a long time ago we were talking about that. No. Yeah. Rituals are meant to serve our connection to God. I mean, once you talk about decapitating and drinking blood and dancing demonesses, it remember. makes you forget about everything that we just covered. Remember that song, Decapitate, Ragnar? No. What was that? Who did that? Void. That was Void. Oh, Void. <laughs> That's some dark lyrics. <laughs> 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 Rituals are meant to serve our connection to God. That's right. Boring. Back to blood, please. <laughs> There's one God and we're lost in the material world. Okay. Blood. <laughs> Stop. Respect <laughs> Kali and worship Radha. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Put up or shut up. Yeah. <laughs> it's Mary didn't like saying that, but she said it. And, and don't lose your head. <laughs> Beware the goat petting zoo. Oh yeah. Beware the goat petting zoo. Oh, it's a petting zoo. Oh, wow, they're worshiping it. It's a giant float parade. Oh, wow, look, it's a Davy. Oh, wait a second. Oh, wait a <laughs> we're, second. We're working on putting everything together here. I'm like, that's a, that was my brain. Oh, goats. I love goats. Oh, a float parade, like uh, homecoming. Uh, oh, flowers. Ritual, sacred ritual performance. The worship of Mother Nature. Wait a second. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Excited for tomorrow's 1,000th episode. We finally made it to 1,000. 